Welcome back to Fox Automotive. We've had a bit of a hiatus here, so I've been on vacation. My schedule's just been super hectic lately, but I'm happy to be back to regular kind of schedule here and regular uploads. And today we're actually gonna talk about one of my favorite car brands. We're gonna look at Jaguar. They've had a couple of news stories in the, uh, floating around in the news lately. Some good, some bad, and we're gonna dive into those and talk about them in a bit more detail in today's story of the day. So let's start by touching on the updated Jaguar XE that's coming in the 2020 model year. This is a relatively needed uh, refresh for this model. It's kind of had a rough start here in the US. The XE was originally released abroad in 2014, but didn't make it into the US until late 2016. Soon after arriving, Jaguar started experimenting and changing up the engine lineup, which felt like this was happening every model year. So it's been a bit of a complicated model to follow, especially here in the US, where the trim names have been changing constantly. And honestly, I think part of that probably contributes to why it's had underwhelming sales in the US. But Jaguar is indicating that this has been flushed out and that now we should have some consistency here in this next generation. So in terms of engine offerings, the 2020 model is getting trimmed down a bit and it won't have any V6 or diesel offerings. So the all the models will come with a four-cylinder turbocharged engine, at least at launch. This inline four will be offered in a P250 and P300 trims with outputs of 247 and 296 horsepower respectively. Since Jaguar seems to be trying to trim the fat in terms of trims for the XE, they've announced uh, that there are no current plans to bring the new turbocharged, supercharged, and hybridized inline six engine to the XE. But on that note, let me know down below if you're interested in a different video that would detail this new engine from Jaguar Land Rover. It seems to be actually pretty interesting. But moving on to the exterior, the XC receives a nice facelift, making it look a bit more sporty and less bland maybe than the previous uh, XE felt. The P300 in particular with the R Dynamic package uh, and the larger wheels, that red paint, looks really sharp. You can see it in these images here. I think it actually looks really nice. The interior is where we see the most change, however, the new XE will receive the dual touchscreens like the iPace, which if you haven't seen or experienced in person yet, I highly suggest you do. Uh, they should be at dealerships now. It's actually a really neat car, but uh, specifically with these screens, they actually work together quite nicely and really have beautiful graphics. And it's really a big upgrade for Jaguar Land Rover, who isn't exactly known for having the best infotainment systems. And we'll actually talk about this a bit more uh, later in this episode. The gauges are also all digital, which will help when buyers are shopping around comparing this to, say, a new Audi A4 with their virtual virtual cockpit system. And also, based on the photos, the interior uh, appears to be a bit bigger than the previous XE, and perhaps that's just due to less wasted space or kind of some more efficient layout, but the center console area in particular seems to be very nicely sized for vehicle in this category. And as you can see in these images, that two-tone interior looks pretty sharp. So. That with the enhanced ambient lighting makes the interior look like quite a big upgrade. So that pretty much wraps up the news around the new XE, which we can expect to see late 2019 or early 2020 here in the US. But now we're gonna move on to the F-Pace. So this will be a quick piece, but unfortunately this is where the bad news for Jaguar comes in. As their best-selling vehicle, the F-Pace, uh, recently came in on top of consumer reports list of the least reliable vehicles. So obviously this hurts the appearance of Jaguar and especially when it's their best selling model. However, there is perhaps more than meets the eye with this report. So I'm actually gonna play devil's advocate here a bit and point out a couple of pieces of information that most news outlets might exclude to try to make a better story because I don't think this is really as big of a deal as they might make it out to be. First off is that nearly all of the problems were software related uh, with regards to the infotainment system. Obviously this is not good, but it's maybe less bad relative to mechanical issues and it's much easier to fix as these are issuing software updates and fixing the infotainment system which is obviously much simpler than uh, dealing with uh, say drivetrain or engine issues which would be much more costly time intensive to fix and certainly more upsetting for the consumer and Jaguar is showing that they're already investing in improving and moving on to a new infotainment system, which we can already see in the iPace, and we already know it's coming in the new XE and likely will be coming in all their new vehicles. 
And my second point, which is possibly even more important, is that the numbers in this report are massively skewed. Over 45,000 F-Paces were sold in the U.S. at the time of this report being issued, but the report only includes 250 responses to their survey. And as we all know, you are much more likely to actually answer and fill out this survey if you've had a bad experience rather than if you've had no problems to talk about. Um, so it's not exactly a unbiased or fair or statistically random sample to begin with. So obviously the numbers may not work in Jaguar's favor, but what's also really significant here compared to other car brands is that there's only 250 responses total since it was introduced in 2016. So compared to other brands in the survey from Consumer Reports, which have 300 plus responses per model year, rather than over the entire lifespan of the car. So for whatever reason, there's very few responses from Jaguar owners in this survey. So I'm just trying to say, don't necessarily take this report as being the end all about the F-Pace. There is certainly more to the story and there's certainly more to it than what these numbers may show. But nonetheless, Jaguar has some issues to work out and hopefully they continue to invest the time and money into improving these areas. But from what we've seen so far, they certainly seem to be taking this seriously in the development of their next generation vehicles. And speaking of next generation vehicles, we're going to wrap up our news on Jaguar today uh, with some continuing rumors and now some hard evidence about the Jaguar J-Pace. So if you haven't picked up on the trend yet, the E-Pace, which is their small SUV or crossover for us in the US, uh, is based on the XE. The F-Pace is an XF size uh, SUV and the J-Pace is supposed to be their flagship XJ size SUV which is aimed to compete with the Audi Q5, Q7, and the BMW X5 range. Now this model has been speculated on and rumored ever since the introduction of the F-Pace back in 2016, and these rumors really gained additional credibility when Jaguar introduced the E-Pace. But now Jaguar is actually known and has been confirmed that they are working on the J-Pace. And Jaguar is expected to have the vehicle ready by 2021, so it could be likely a 2022 model year, uh, maybe a 2021, but we should see it here in the next couple of years. It's actually gonna be based on a new modular platform that Jaguar is developing with his sister company, uh, Land Rover. So this next generation platform will also be present in the new Range Rover and Range Rover Sport, which are also likely to come out around 2021. We will actually get to see this platform earlier, however, later this year even, uh, with the introduction of the new Defender by Land Rover. So this new platform is dubbed the MLA, and it's a highly modular platform. So given this modularity, Jaguar Land Rover is planning to eventually use this platform across all of their Jaguar Land Rover products. This is especially important because MLA has the ability to support hybridization and full electric platforms, which will allow Jaguar Land Rover to really future-proof their lineup as well as easily introduce hybrid and full electric platforms to every single model that they offer here in the near future. And then also from an efficiency standpoint in terms of uh, mechanics, repairs, fixing issues, it, there's obviously a lot of efficiency benefits from having a shared platform across all of your products and from that platform being highly modular. So that pretty much wraps up all the Jaguar news we had today. Hopefully you found this video interesting and if you did, hit that like button and get subscribed because we'll have more content like this coming shortly and we're happy to be back on a regular posting schedule now. Um, but also let me know down in the comments what you think about some of this Jaguar news. Uh, particularly interested what you think of the new XE refresh. Currently the F-Pace, their SUV outsells the XE by a ratio of about two to one here in the US. So do you think this refresh is gonna be enough to make the XE sedan competitive again in this market against say the new three series or the new A4 from Audi? Let me know what you think down below, but for now, happy to be back on a regular uploading schedule. So we'll see you in the next video.